even the dry bones in the graves that are beginning to shake they know the time has come it's a shame that some people who are still living don't understand that especially Igbo traders in Lagos so say to go Ladeko is the first phase of this very deadly salvo they will destroy your businesses after that they will take over your houses when I make for them I want you to be writing down what I'm saying. That is why Barrister will say, go and bring your pen and your paper. So that when we are speaking, you'll be seeing it live and direct. What we do here is science. When we tell you that if you mix two molecules of hydrogen and one of oxygen you will get h2o which is water we mean it if you try it you will see it in here you will see it if you miss this golden opportunity we are bound to suffer in time to come i have not come of course with all of you uh, like the fact that you are doing very well in america but there is one more thing that you must do you must come out to support what you're doing. We need guns and we need bullets. I know we don't last so much. That's why we need the human being mad and mad. That's why we don't need to kill somebody is very difficult for us. So to ask the kind of people who believe that we need guns and bullets and weapons will be very, very difficult to digest. But without it, I was all over us. They have succeeded in planting a brush in the state. One big massive problem we have. The same thing that I went to in a Bible. If they succeed in triangulating because in life everything is a triangle, if they get away, if they take you, know, if they take you watch out for them, they're finished as a people. Completely gone as a race. You will come back home, you know the race your fast come home. Because they are coming. Program is everywhere in their family. They will run us in a matter of minutes. And the world will not talk about it. Because mankind is afraid of Biafra. They believe that Biafra, after Biafra comes, the world comes to an end. Ask any wise man to tell you. They believe that Biafra is the last miracle. Once it comes, life will come to an end as we know it. But we know that they are wrong. We know that this very problem that was made to us a long time ago, only if we go back to the most high, we will realize our potential, must be seen in our lifetime. We have the potential in this room to do it. Only if we can rise up to that we challenge. That is why the same way that Israel stood against every world is how Biafra is going to stand. Not just as a pinnacle, it is about the ability of the people who are downtrodden, people who we have pressed down for very long. That as a willing testimony to the kindness and the goodness of the most touchful God. I thank you all very much for listening, and I do hope in time to come that you bring yourself to appreciate what you have done. Thank you very much. What maybe I didn't understand, what exactly is the objective of your movement, number one? You made mention of uh, the twenty second of this month. Yes. What we have and I didn't get to hear exactly what it is to get made the twenty second of uh, this month. And then the third one is that, did you make mention of you? We need arms and it's not around. Yes, 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 so yes. I, need, I really need to understand these three things. Okay. Know, please. Thank you. Let me start with the last one, please. Thank you for the words because my daughter asked. On the Sunday, the 10th of August, our people came out from the evangelists. They preached to others about the need for us to get their from. And um, on the orders of Buhari, they were short dead. And you will know that it will be in 2002. Five years and six ordered the army to do something at the same time when members of the NASA were shot to pieces because they felt that you know you can kill them. Evil people, people don't care, which is a matter of fact. They don't care about each other, that is the truth. You may gather once in a while to eat, to party, and to drink, but when our people die, nobody cares about them, nobody cares about them. Now, from that, we now know that the best way to defend yourself is to be armed. Because Boko Haram is everywhere in the zoo, police in the zoo, I mean the zoo name, zoo, by the way, is Nigeria. That's what we call it, it's a zoo. It is full of wild animals. Only those who are not sensible will understand that there is no name like Nigeria before the white man came. I don't even want to call it nigger. 
then I'll call you a nigger. If you are saying, you say, I, I'm a Nigerian, it means you are a nigger from the nigger area, that's what you mean it. Niger is English word for nigger. In Latin, it is nigger. In France, it is called Niger. This is something. And I can't be a nigger. I come from Biafra. It's a place that's called I'm British. That's number one. So we need guns and we need bullets. And those of you in America will give it to us. Very, very important. And also, on the 22nd of this month, something will happen. It's called the Blood Moon. Most of you don't know that in 1967, before the war started, there was a blood moon as well. Are you aware of that? It comes once in a while. There was blood moon in 67. There will be blood moon this year because after this year, we are going to be free no matter what happens. Because if we don't get the effort, everybody will have to die. Simple as that. I will not judge I, I came from back home for this convention. I stay in Biafra now. I don't stay in London anymore. I stay in Biafra. I don't want people to underestimate what we are fighting and the type of adversaries that we are facing. Very, very beautiful. All the World Congress was set up to ensure that all these senseless extrajudicial things about people should stop. Is that not correct? Is that not correct? Is it continuing or not? Yeah. That's still killing us. They are deporting us from Lagos, burning our shops all over the place. Our people being rendered useless and homeless. No appointment from Buhari. The oil and gas comes from our land. But after a while, I sent more or less, well, this is what you have to do. If you don't do it then, what comes after it? My question to you now is that, have you ever thought about the effects of what, what we're trying to incite? Yes, and number two, you know the society where we are in. Where do we go from there? I understand we have concern. Is it possible for the concern to be addressed objectively? We can always reach wherever we want to go. I'm sorry, you're not doing it. Thank you very much. As long as you're a dear friend, you have my love and you have my respect, I will honor you anytime, any day. If you stand in front of me and say you're a Nigerian, you have something else coming. I will never respect you because it means you're not sensible. So, about the implications we are dead already. Just say that it's down this year, no fault. If you want to live in humiliation, fine for the person. As for me, death is. Will be paid in a million fold for extraction against the some people. Every trigger. And now the country should not be a problem. And the country is in the struggle. It's in the struggle for liberation of his people. For first of all, for liberation of his life. And liberation of his people. And people have chosen to follow him. If you are not following him, just keep quiet and go and do your own. Let it not be an issue for you. Because see, you are not an issue for him. But you come in and become in and become in and become. Why? Who knows that in and become will come? Nobody knows. I didn't know you didn't know. But the Bwari, the Christian and the Kanu. Bwari is not the most strongest human being on earth. Well, I've seen so many people. Where is Lago? Where is Lago? Apartheid system, where is it? Where is the British Empire? Where is the Soviet Union? Where is the Roman Empire? We don't see a lot of things. In and the coming, whether they bow for him or they don't bow for him, it's none of your business. Because if you are talking, if you don't, if you have sense, if you talk about in and the coming, we go talk when they may bow down for one man calling you, when they may bow down for one man calls you that, when they may bow down for that thing they call Bari. That is right for a moment. You don't talk all that, that I am the canoe and I be a problem. I am the canoe. It's only a cause. A cause that will bring salvation, independence, freedom, and dignity back to our people. If you don't agree with him, just be quiet. Because very soon you will come. We are marking all of you. We are marking all of you. All of you will think that by trading with us, by being a philosophy, you are going to gain. Whether you are a Kokweo, you are also a Kweo, whatever you call yourself, be talking. You say you are intellectual. I don't see anything intellectual about you. If you want to debate, I am ready to debate with you on all issues. And you tell me why the boss is better. Let, let them have a level playing field. Now let all the companies return to where they are. Whether the boss will be what it is. 
Because it's like a sucking blood, a taracula, sucking on the blood of the people of, 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 of the South South and the South East. And you're talking about Lagos. What does Lagos have? You're talking about Lagos, sucking on our blood. Instead of our political leaders to stand up and defend and say, you don't pay no certificate of occupancy for you. If you don't bring your headquarters, no, revoke the, 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 the when you say land is in the hands of people, the revoke all the certificate of occupancy of these companies. And tell them, and then there'll be a collision between this hero government in Abuja, the government in Bonaco, the government in Yeruba, the government in Azoba, the government in Yo, the government in uh, in Owe. Revoke all the certificate of occupancy of Gasol Station. Revoke all the certificate of occupancy of everything. If they don't come back. Even those of you who are doing, who believe in the devil, do that first. Instead of coming to talk. When you do that, they will sit down. There will be constitutional crisis. They cannot arrest you. They ask our assembly to pass law, revoke it, and let the people occupy their place. Now the canon should not be a problem. Now the canon has shown the way. It's a woman being, and what he has done. There is no living evil man, dead or alive, that has done as much as what Nambi Kano has done in these few years. And those of us who are appreciated will continue to appreciate it. Not because we will give us anything on that. He has nothing to give about. But we know that what he is doing, the benefit of it, will not only be for us, but it will be for all of us. And will stand, will benefit immensely, including you, your children, with all the sabotage, all the tongues you are putting on the way. Inam the Kanu is a man to be respected. Hello, I welcome you to a special presentation on Thank You, Mazinam Dekano. I am Pastor Maxwell Nawe here. This is very special in the sense that it has to do with powerful prophecies for Mazinam Dekano and Chief John Niamodo. This very presentation is just to give that prophecy a visual backup because sometimes when people are doing copy and paste of certain articles, they end up omitting some letters or some words thereby altering that very article. So it's important I give it a visual backup. This article was published on trackingtime.co. That's where you have the authentic publication of it. So anything you may have read on the social media or on the internet, if it is not exactly what you're going to hear in this video, it means that that article may have been altered for one or two reasons. I don't know, but it's important I give it a visual backup. This is not my usual presentation on thank you, Mazen and Kano. I am not going to be teaching or preaching, so it's just to give that very prophecy, the article on that prophecy, um, a visual backup, that's all. So I'm going to strictly read out the content of that very article, and I will try as much as I can to read it clearly to everyone's understanding. So this is the article. Powerful Prophecies for Mazen Ambekano and Chief John Nyangwodo by Pastor Maxwell Nawehe. Four things I want to say before I give the prophecies. Number one, I did not discuss with or reveal these prophecies to anyone so that nobody will add anything to or adulterate them. Number two, I am not looking for popularity because already my name is popular for the good reasons, both in real life in different aspects and online. Also, my name is already indexed in Google search engine that once you search Maxwell Nawe or Maxwell Ekene Nawe on Google, you will appreciate the fact that already my name is popular for the good reasons. Which other popularity am I looking for? If there is, that would be more popularity in speaking the truth and fulfilling my God-given purpose. Otherwise, none whatsoever. Number three, for some reasons, I am going to strictly say the prophecies without making illustrations or analysis. I may highlight one or two things in brackets in the second prophecy. I know that God will give you understanding of what he has revealed to me. Number four, in a revelation, I needed a microphone to deliver this message and I saw two IPOB members with a very loud public address system meaning those who are in position to deliver this message directly to Mazen Amdekano and Chief John Nyangwodo. I asked them to give me the microphone to deliver this message, but they refused. So I was forced to do so by myself with an ordinary voice, shouting my voice to class. That is why I am sending these messages using this platform. If you are in position to amplify or deliver this message direct to Mazen Amdekano or Chief John Nyangwodo, you are under divine obligation to do so without any hesitation. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3, blessed said is he that read it, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. 
prophecy for Mazen Namdekano revealed on Saturday, 14th of July, 2020. I saw Mazen Namdekano in the midst of his top confidant in the Biafra restoration project, just like in an inner caucus meeting. He was overwhelmed with joy and unshakable confidence, expressing that the deal is done. The last straw that broke the camel's back in Biafra restoration is here. He said so categorically with a heat of conclusion, overwhelming joy and unshakable confidence. Then I saw his house besieged by a combined squad of heavily armed men who came to abduct him. There we are, a conglomeration of special armed forces from different places, drafted from different force formations, police, army, navy, secret services and intelligence, and special squads. All were well armed to the teeth. This operation was discreetly kept from the knowledge of men. It was meant to be swift and shocking. This combined squad of heavily armed men who came to abduct Mazen and the Canon blocked every route suspected to be his possible escape route. I mean every route. Even the ones nobody knew exists were airtight blocked by these heavily armed men. It was Mazen and the Canon's confidants and insiders, I could not see the face in particular, who are privy to his top secret about Biafra restoration and private life that revealed it. Hence the besiegement for his abduction. But Mazen and Bikani has kept or evaded the abduction to everyone's surprise. Though the heavily armed men were religiously manning their positions, yet they didn't know when or how Mazen and Bikani escaped. How he escaped, I cannot tell. It was nothing short of a miraculous escape. My goodness. It was in such a way that it would be too hard to explain. But I was overjoyed. He escaped. Note. I'm not talking about the past Operation Python Dam 2 on September 14th, 2017. This is in the future. Though God revealed the Operation Python Dam 2 to me on Friday, 8th of September 2017, before it took place, and I told some IPOV principal officers, but they didn't take it serious or circulate the information. Neither have they circulated other prophecies I gave to them which have come to pass. In fact, the Operation Python Dance 2 did not manifest fully the way God revealed it to me. If it did, that would have been bloodier and full-blown war than what happened during the Operation, not just in Biafra land, but across the board. Also, God has given me a similar prophecy to this on Sunday, 28 October 2018. I wrote it down. I have been praying over it, but did not make it public at the time because it would be completely misunderstood reason being that the most influential and revered religious leader in the world is involved. I know that is why God has to come to me again with a similar prophecy and have given me the opportunity and boldness to make it public that the message may get to Mazen Amdekano with every sense of clarity devoid of distortion or hindrances. Right now, I will release the second prophecy I cited a few seconds ago because it is in line with the prophecy that was revealed to me on Saturday 4th July 2020. God gave it to me on Sunday, 28 October 2018. At the mouth of two or three witnesses, every truth shall be established. See Deuteronomy 19, verse 15, Matthew 18, verse 16. This is how I wrote it down on my diary on Sunday, 28 October 2018. Words in brackets are inserted now to clarify a few things. Revelation. I can't remember all the parts now. That's because I was reluctant to deliver the message for so many reasons. So I lost some parts of the message, but it wasn't a good one about Unambikano. They, he is the most influential and revered religious leader in the world. I don't want to mention his name or his church to avoid misunderstanding. You may know who I am talking about and what he represents in a prophet of this nature. I heard him make comments of blame justifying the killing of Maz Unambikano, but God forbid, that will never happen. Mazen Namdekano shall not die, but live to fulfill his purpose. He described him as a poor boy who should have listened to the advice to stop Biafra agitation, but is now to be or has been killed in an aeroplane for the world to see. Again I say, Mazen Namdekano shall not die, but live to fulfill his God-given purpose for Biafra restoration in the name of Yeshua. Amen. It was a kind of mixed feelings and meanings, but it is clear that he was betrayed by his most trusted confidants or insiders, as if his assurance for safety was a global conspiracy for his eventual death. 
Again, I say, man Zen and the Kano shall not die, but live to fulfill his purpose in the name of Yahushua. Amidst reactions that follow the announcement, I'm still narrating the revelation. I was like, it could be his strategy to deflect away and divert attentions of his enemies from his next plan. God should crown his efforts for Biafra with success, or at least spare his life. As I pondered on the message, God spoke to me. Namdekano should not relax in the hands of any mortal man, no matter the assurance, but in my hands, the hands of the Most High God, the end. Warning, warning, warning to Mazen Namdekano. Mazen Namdekano, I'm not warning or giving you a marching order, professional, pastoral, or religious advice. I am not sending this message to you because I can write, speak, or just for the fact that I'm a pastor. Never ever. I am just a messenger with a message from God. Therefore, it is important I say it how God has put it in my mouth. Every leader has one or more top secrets for the achievement of the ultimate purpose of his leadership. In this case, Biafra restoration. And that or those secrets must not be divulged to anyone. In as much as such of those secrets are not for the exploitation of the people or solely for personal aggrandizement, don't divulge such secrets. As a leader, you will continue to guide your private life jealously as much as you can. Do not allow certain confidants or insiders, regardless of how dear they are to you, to invade your privacy no matter what, because they may use it whenever Satan takes over their hearts, as no one is exempted from satanic tricks and temptations, betrayals and sabotage. Some will fall while some will stand. But we can't say with absolute certainty those that will stand until the satanic wave and torrent of sabotage and betrayal hits very hard. Those secrets make you unpredictable, impregnable, and formidable. Keep them between you and God who called you to lead us and use them appropriately when best you and God know is the appointed time for the Biafra Restoration Project. Don't yield to intense pressure or tickling evidence of Biafra referendum or final steps to exit Nigeria in the shortest period of time and divulge the secret prematurely. After Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, ascended to heaven, God did not stand from his throne for him to sit. He rather gave him a position to sit at his right hand because he will never share his glory. Top secret, metaphorically speaking, with anyone. See Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 9 to 13. God's secret is what makes him God. Same for every leader. I am speaking in the light of genuine and purpose-driven secrets. Above all, Mazen and Kano, continue to call upon Chukwuki Kabi Mihenile. You are a prayerful man and dedicated to your God-given purpose. The anointing is on your head and the mantle in your hands. At the end, we shall overcome. Warning to others. Please, I am not warning you just because I can. Take no offense because I meant none. None of you should for any reason sabotage the Biafra Restoration Project, especially within the IPOB leadership and those of you working very closely with Mazen and the Kano. If you are one of his confidants, you must not divulge or sabotage his best secret plans for Biafra restoration just because you are privy to such secrets or have access to his private life. Never you ever. No matter the temptation or weight of offense you may have encountered in the discharge of your duties, none of you should try it. I am appealing to your consciences. None of you should on purpose. By your actions or inactions, make Mazen and the kind of go into hiding from Biafra restoration or have his resolve to restore Biafra, cracked or broken, just as it can happen to any human being. Because every human being has a threshold of perseverance, endurance, and tolerance. When Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, got to his threshold of perseverance and endurance during his days in the flesh, as a human being, he prayed that a cop death on the cross should pass away from him though he subjected his will to the will of god his father had god not sent his angel to strengthen him 
he wouldn't have died on the cross. Fulfill his purpose. See Matthew 26 verse 38 to 44. Luke 22 verse 41 to 44. I am pleading with all of you in the name of Yahweh Elohim. Do not cause this new generation of Biafrans, whose 40 years as a generation started counting from 2006, to fail in restoring Biafra as soon as possible. Not close to the completion of the 40 year cycle as a generation, but as soon as possible. When Moses felt threatened after his secret action was revealed by a Hebrew, he ran away from Egypt and went into hiding. It took 40 years before he came back and went to Pharaoh for the freedom of Israel. The years of sufferings, slavery, and degrading human treatment of the Israelites in Egypt were multiplied by the 40 years Moses spent in exile because of what that Israeli man did. See Exodus chapter 2, verse 11 to 15. Please don't frustrate or do something that will force the Biafra restoration to linger for more years because you and your family can never ever survive it. If this new generation of Biafrans, whose 40 years as a generation started counting from 2006, fails to restore Biafra in our generation, both they, the saboteurs, the politicians, business magnates, elites, Anna Wings, Hoy Polois, rich and mighty, east, south, and west, are all doomed in Nigeria. I am not threatening anybody. I pray it does not happen. I have said it severally and I want to repeat. This is the prophetic time frame for God's prophetic fulfillment as written in Genesis 49 verse 19b. But he shall overcome at the last. That's exactly where we are. Try and watch all my presentations on Thank You Mazin and Kano, both on YouTube. On YouTube is Maxwell and Awee, my YouTube channel, and Facebook, that you may appreciate what I'm saying in the light of the prophetic time frame of God. Prophecy to Chief John Nyangwodo revealed on Tuesday, 14th July 2020. Chief John Nyangwodo, Chief, you are old enough to be my father, though I don't know you in person and I don't want to for any reason whatsoever. Therefore, I will do my very best to accord you the courtesy and honor you truly deserve in that very light. But I will urge you not to get offended at whatever you will hear or read from me that you may classify as inappropriate or give any other classification that may suit your expression because I am just a messenger from God. You do not have to take it personal. Initially, I didn't want to deliver this message, but God said I must. Who am I to argue with God? I have learned not to argue with God because I argued with him, refused to become a pastor, but after 10 years and 10 months, he arrested me. And here I am. Our elder said, Okwagri na mwata na akadi ya rebuya. Uku urondo modo, igen ta uronka. Ama ka mwoke si iken. O gaya tu se uchi yakamba. Chief, yes, you are highly placed in the society. You wield political or institutional powers. You command both the loyalty and attention of some personalities across the board by the virtue of your position as the Knights President General of Ohanes and Diego, or personal capacity and attainment in life. Yet, you are answerable and accountable to God Almighty for that very position or attainment in life, not less those who made it possible for you to become or remain the incumbent or Ohanes and Diego President General, or those who probably make unholy demand on your office, possibly leveraging on whatever advantage they have, pressuring you to stiffly oppose the Biafra Restoration Project led by Mazin Nandekano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB. My dear Chief John Nyangwodo, I am aware that you have your rights to freedom of speech, of conscience and thought. But you know as a learned man, full of age and experience, that God is supreme. His will and purpose for Biafra Restoration is unquestionable, unequivocal. Evidence abounds, Chief. You are aware that mortals can never, ever, summarily or roundly defeat the eternal purpose of the immortal, God Almighty. More so, Biafra restoration or independence is guaranteed in the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of the Indigenous Peoples, of which Biafrans are among. Please, sir, I don't want to say another thing from now henceforth, 
whatsoever it may be. That is not exactly the message God gave me for you. Paul says to the Lord, don't stand in the way. If you are not in support of Biafra restoration, keep it to yourself. Don't stand in the way. If you don't like what Mazina Mekano and IPOB are doing to restore Biafra, keep your feelings and antagonistic opinions to yourself. Don't stand in the way. For search the Lord. If you keep quiet and refrain from attacking Biafra restoration secretly or openly, nothing will happen to you. You will not die. But if you continue to stand in the way of Biafra expression to stop it, because you believe you have backups, those who are protecting you, you will die suddenly and sooner than anyone would have imagined. It will be in such a way that those you believe are your backups will be surprised. It will be like when the kite swiftly picks the chicken from the hen. First sakes the Lord. You stand so tall among the people, you are filled with pride, your pride will consume you if you continue to stand in the way of Biafra restoration. But if you keep quiet and your antagonistic opinions about Biafra restoration to yourself, even if you don't come out to support or say anything in favor of Biafra restoration, nothing will happen to you. I repeat, nothing will happen to you. You will not die. For such the Lord, steer clear from Biafra restoration. If you don't want to support it, not less your position in the society, don't stand in the way and you will not die. Don't allow anything or anyone push you to an unceremonious and sudden death. Don't stand in the way and you will not die. Thus says the Lord, the end. Please, those we are not my words. Matthew 11, verse 15. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. I am saying this now. I'm done with the content of that very article. When a doctor diagnoses you and discovers that there is a disease or virus in your body and tells you if you don't treat this ailment, if you don't treat, if you don't get rid of this virus, you will die. That is not a threat from your doctor. Your doctor is trying to save your life. A doctor must tell you the truth about your health and not lie to you, just to save you. Thanks for watching. I remain Pastor Maxwell Nawi. Biafra must live long. Yes. 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 She will live. She will live. She will live. For the hand of God is in it. Take your seat. Sit, 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 sit. Say a better amen. Let me tell you something. You know, I've not said anything about it. Ever before. God said to me, I, I am he that wakes men up from time to time to fight. Hear this. Hear this. This is not the first name that started as a catalyst for this move. God said, even when I'm disappointed by one, I will raise another. Even when another disappoints me, I will raise another. He said, now, God said to me, now, even if I had no intention to give them their desire, for the sake of the blood of the innocent. So if God is saying something like this. That means he will grant the desire of the people. Hear this. But I will not tell you. Whether it's today or tomorrow. But their desire. Their desire. God will give it to them. In the fullness of time. Listen to me, the the spirit, when I look at it, the, the, spirit, the Lord opened my eyes and God showed me what is called earthquake. Earthquake coming. Earthquake. When I say earthquake, earthquake is the type that is so highly magnitude. It's coming. It's coming. The scene of this country, the scene of the innocent blood that have been shared, 
innocent blood of people that are in their houses people that are in their territories being killed on daily basis god is no more happy at all god is no more happy at all and if care is not taken as quick as possible i see the name nigeria deleted from the face of the earth as a result of this scene the authority involved should quickly rise up. Can I show you something on my scene? I saw the man they call the leader of indigenous people Igbo. They call him now the world. The God told me that what Ojibo started and stopped, that man will fulfill it. He may be taken like a child's word, but listen, God allowed me to say this. That's why I'm on camera. At least I want you to go viral. Put it on any social media and let it go wide. Anybody that wants to arrest me, let them come. No. God said I should say this. God told me, he says, it will not take time. This is the what. But what he's told me is, he says, after the regime, that's the way he put it. He said, after this what regime. I say what? He said, watch after the next what regime. He said, prepare. And when I wake up, the Lord said to me, I've told you, start preparing. Listen, if you are from the east, if you are from what? Start developing your family. Start developing your land. Sister, you won't take your home. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't know how many years, but the Lord told me that man will fulfill that purpose. I'm saying this before it will start happening. There are five words, and these five people will be families. It's not just going to be men, it's going to be both men and their wife and their family. These five people, this man will raise, are the people that will help him to carry this vision. That even after he has fulfilled his purpose and God, they will continue. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't say I should do what? I am saying, can I say it? He said I should do what? Say it. The second one, God did not permit me to say it. I'm going to stop here. Yeah. Let us pray that peace will lead them. That's not speaking, that's not speaking. Because I'm seeing it. Yes. Therefore, come. It is the will of God. It is God's will. That it should come. If they try to fight the will of God, it will be disaster. If they try to fight the will of God, it will be like disaster. Remember what happened to the other one that God showed me that I'm driving at is the issue of Nigeria economy. There has been so much poverty in Nigeria next year. So much poverty. People will suffer in Nigeria. Next year, it will be terrible. You know, last time I spoke to you about this one. You have seen it now. That money will be dropping. You see how it is. Next year now, it will be terrible. God spoke to me. God is not happy with Nigeria. Nigeria is a wonderful nation. Nigerians are good. But until they remove that man, they call Namde from prison. There is no man in Nigeria, no president, no man in Nigeria that can feed that economy. If I be a man of God, let's, let's see. No man, the, in the more they try, the more it gets worse. God show me about that guy. You see, there are people that are untouchable. They have to understand who is that man, the Carlo. Before you find somebody, find out who he is. There is invisible hand pushing the man. I've seen this more than 10 times. 
There is an invisible hand, and this hand is from God, it's not from Satan. What they should do now is to release him from there. I want President Buhari to know that that guy is not fighting him. This thing has been going on before he became a president. And the issue this guy is talking about, President Buhari can't handle it, it's bigger than him. This is a nation issue. One man can't handle it. People from the east, north, south and west are supposed to come together and discuss what is happening. Because the blood of innocent ones they have shed in Nigeria, God is angry. There is nothing anyone can do in Nigeria now as a president that will work. If you remove President Buhari, put that man person, he will still not let me do it. Until they remove the man and look for a way to beg God for forgiveness. Because when you are killing protesters, I don't know what they take. We think they are not man beings. Full army has men killing people anyhow. Nobody talking about it. We think they are not man beings they are killing. We think this blood, they are blood of animal. God is fire. God is angry. And that man, the car law, like I said, if that man die now, or anybody that was arrested with him, or because of him, Nigeria will crash. The reason why Nigeria still exists is because now the car is alive. Nigeria is sitting on time bomb. What they will face, Boko Haram will be still small. Nigeria is going to face bomb that will be bombing Nigeria will be coming from spirits. No money. You will hear that bomb blast without tracing any, they won't put the bomb. Spirit beings will be throwing bomb in Nigeria. They will throw bomb and. 2020 is heating up to a point that I see a man called Namdekano. I see a man called Namdekano. The man called Namdekano. I see the world giving him a word. I see international community. I see the whole world coming to give him a word. And they are giving that, giving him that award in Nigeria. I see as they are giving him that award, they are bringing him and I see Namdekano celebrating. I don't know whether he's celebrating independence. I don't know. But I'm seeing a celebration. I'm seeing a celebration. I'm seeing a celebration. And when the question was going on in the realm of the spirit, I heard a voice that said that this man has sacrificed a lot. He has sacrificed a lot. He has sacrificed lives. He has sacrificed his life, sacrificed time, and dedicated. And because of that, they begin to give something like an award. I see him receiving something like this from the sky. They give it to him. He was carrying it. It's like a map. And I see people celebrating. I see people celebrating. I see people celebrating. And when that celebration was going on, I see three generals. Paragi the growth standard. I see three generals in the realm of the spirit. I better ask who are those generals? They took me back in the old time. They begin to call name of three major generals, people that have come and gone. I don't know whether they are alive or they are not alive, but it was three generals. I see them standing, one standing here, another one standing here, no one standing here, and the, the man called Nam the Kano is in the front. And they were saluting him. They were saluting him. That one is Barasa. I see in the realm of the spirit, I see Nigerian government begin to beg for an evil man to take over the power i don't know why they are begging the man to take over the power i don't know but what i saw in the spirit i see a man from the eastern part of nigeria they are now begging him with nigerian presidency they say please take it take it he said what am i going to do with what else they say no take it now even if it is two days take it isn't it Makata, braskata. i don't know i don't know what it means but in the realm of the spirit i see them giving it to him and as they're giving it to him he begins to say ah, i don't know Please, those of the media and the Disney, I want to concentrate. Watch, listen. The Lord showed me something. What do I see? I saw the man they call the leader of indigenous people, Igbo. They call him now the world. The Lord told me that what Ojibo started and stopped. That man will fulfill it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He may be taken like a child's word. But listen. God allowed me to say this. That's why I'm on camera. Uh, please, I want you to go viral. Put it on any social media and let it go white. Anybody that wants to arrest me, let them come. No. God said I should say this. God told me, he says, it will not take time.
specifically, this is the word. But what he's told me is, he says, after the regime, that's the way he put it. He said, after this word, regime. I say what? He said, watch after the next word, regime. He said, prepare. And when I wake up, the Lord said to me, I've told you, start preparing. Listen, if you are from the east, if you are from what? Start developing your family. Start developing your land. Sister, it won't take long. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't know how many years, but the Lord told me that man will fulfill that purpose. before it will start happening. There are five what? And these five people will be families. It's not just going to be men. It's going to be both men and their wife and their family. These five people, this man will raise, are the people that will help him to carry this vision. That even after he has fulfilled his purpose and God, they will continue. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That is what God said I should do what? I asked him, can I say it? He said I should do what? Say it. The second one, God did not permit me to say it. I'm going to stop here. God bless.